Rub up your engines! Now everyone who knows me knows I'm not a Volkswagen fan, but I'm also an honest man. So a guy brought me a brand new 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan, four cylinder, turbo, all wheel drive that he just bought, and I'll show you what you get for the money so you can make a wise choice. Now he got the price down to 34, which for an SUV all wheel drive as fast as this, isn't a bad price. Plus, he didn't buy it. He's leasing it and he's paying 500 bucks a month. So that'll give you an idea of what figures you have to pay. But what do you get with it? Well, realize at least this one is made in Mexico. You get quite a bit of space. Look at that room. You get all wheel drive. Now what's under the hood of this thing? It's a four cylinder turbo. Now this thing puts out 180 horsepower and it's connected to an eight speed automatic transmission. So it's pretty zippy. Now here's the funny thing. He drove it to Rhode Island from Pennsylvania on the highway. He got 34 miles a gallon. This is the all wheel drive version. I just looked it up. It's rated at 30 on the highway. So hey, he's getting 34. And I got to say that beats the heck out of the guy who brought me a 2024 Acura TLXS model yesterday because he drove here and he got 12.4 miles a gallon because he drives like a maniac. Now, you might wonder why people are buying Volkswagens. When you compare the price of this, say he wanted to get an equivalent Toyota, he'd be paying at least 20 to 25 grand more. Even if he has problems, the warranty is going to cover a bunch of stuff if they do go bad. The problem with these really is the next series of owners. <laughs> I've had people buy Volkswagens and no lie I had one customer he was the 13th owner and the car was only 10 years old right? <laughs> it was falling apart mind you only paid like $1,500 for it but you get a brand new one the warranty if you like the price and we'll see how they ride all the ones I tested rode fine this is a brand new one I'm sure it's gonna ride fine we'll find out but that's one of the reasons that people buy these it's the price for what you get. If you're a real cheapskate like me, you're never gonna buy a new car anyway. And if you're gonna drive a car for 30, 40 years like me and four or 500,000 miles, this probably wouldn't be a good choice for you. But starting from brand new for what you're paying, now he didn't buy it, he leased it, but hey, $34,000. The average car today new is $45,500. So this was well below the average price. And hey, I mean, it's a nice looking SUV. There's no arguing that. And Volkswagen always made things that were fun to drive. And Volkswagen, unlike many of the other manufacturers, they haven't gone gaga over these stupid CVT transmissions. This transmission is an actual automatic transmission with gears, which makes them more fun to drive. And since it has so many gears, hey, 34 miles a gallon driving over here on the highway. For a zippy little thing like that, now, do realize it is a four-cylinder turbo, but it's not a tiny turbo. It's not one of those 1.2, 1.4 liter engines. It's a two liter engine. So it's a good sized four-cylinder engine, just like take a Honda two liter engine. If I was gonna buy a Honda, I would get a two liter four-cylinder. I would not get a 1.5 liter engine. A little bit bigger engine, you got more power, and this being the turbo, it's got all kinds of power. But you got some Volkswagen, see plastic everywhere, all plastic stuff. People are now suing Volkswagen for saying you put the, too much cheap plastic in it, but the cheap plastic doesn't break on a new car. It takes quite a few years for the stuff to start breaking. And if you get it new, that's not one of your worries. It certainly is when they get older, plus I have customers with them in Tennessee. Tennessee does not do emissions testing. So as they age, and they're incredible expensive emission systems break down. The catalytic converters often need replacing on them. They need all kinds of work. What do the people in Tennessee do? They just take them off and drive them. <laughs> they don't care, right? But if you live in a state that does inspections, if you bought one of these used high mileage, I can just about guarantee you, you're gonna spend many thousands of dollars repairing the pollution control system as you keep it if you buy it used with like 150,000 miles. That's just the way these things are. Now, you buy a new one, the warranty on these things, the catalytic converter and the anti-pollution system, it's got an eight year, 80,000 mile warranty. So if it breaks under that period of time, they got to fix it for free. And that's federal law. So they can't get out of that. So that's not something you worry about. But like I say, buy one with 150,000 miles on baby, you're rolling the dice. This has got the push button. Everybody's got push buttons on them. 
We'll look inside. Real nice looking interior. See, it's brand new. It's only got 3,700 miles on it. Of course, it's got push button start. They're all going that way. All these fancy dash stuff, adaptive cruise control, you name it. I like this. Their panel is integrated. Look at that. It's integrated. It's not ugly sticking up. It doesn't ruin the lines of the car. And they got nice lines. Beautiful steering wheel. It's got the typical rounded on the top and flat on the bottom. It's not like an airplane one, those crazy Teslas. It makes a lot more sense. Got a gigantic sunroof if you're into that. I'm not, but what the heck. Got a good stereo system too. And you can play two ways. You can just put it in gear and drive. You can shift it over here and you can do the gears up and down. You can see manual one, manual two show you the gears you can put it in various modes you can play with driving mode snow custom you can adjust things what you want i mean it's pretty cool i gotta say let's see if the bugs work yep you can go normal you can go sport or you can customize it yourself so here we go for a little road test it's got a nice backup camera you can easily see what's happening and i still look over here because sometimes trucks come flying from my neighbor's yard and I don't want to get lambasted by them. First thing I noticed, it's a four-cylinder engine. It doesn't shake at all. Go over the giant hump. Slowly because it's gigantic. But it goes over it perfectly fine. Speedometer is very easy to see. You better like digital because all the sky is digital. doesn't have the fake analog one. And for these horrible bumpy roads, hey, it rides pretty good. The main thing people get these for, though, is for their drivability. That they are fun to drive. They're pretty tight driving machines. The old ones were. Well, let's see if this one is. So here we are in the main drive. Is anybody coming? And here we go. Give it some gas in. And a turbo kicks in. Makes a nice little sound. Plenty zippy enough. Now you won't be getting 35 miles a gallon driving like that, but <laughs> when you want to go fast, you can. And realize it is a smaller wheelbase vehicle, so you're gonna feel these bumps, especially since I have it in sport mode. We'll change the driving mode. We'll put it on eco mode. Have it on eco mode when he was driving over. That's how he got the 35 miles a gallon. It does have a nice smoother ride now. I can see putting it in that mode. You can cruise all day. The seats are very comfortable. Certainly has no trouble climbing up hills. It's in eco now, so to go fast, we'll have to floor it to put it into passing gear, of course. It is an automatic transmission with a lot of gears. But you can see right here, I haven't ruined his gas mileage yet. It still says 33.8 since start. And I guess they have a lot of old people's clientele cause that turn signal is loud. You won't miss it. It does have the start stop technology though. I don't particularly like that. I especially don't like start stop technology with turbochargers because they will have a tendency of overheating. You drive hard, you stop and the turbo turns off. It's no longer getting all the lubrication and coolant that it gets because the engine's not running. You're better to always leave a turbo idling. If you're a real fanatic, you can idle your turbo for four or five minutes when you come home before you shut it off to make it last longer. So turning a turbo off all the time and starting it up is not a good idea if you ask me or any honest engineer. So what do I think? Well, let's say you're thinking about buying one of these. My advice is road test one try all the different modes because it's a radically different car when it's in sport mode versus when it's in eco mode all you gotta do is turn the knobs push the buttons easy to do you can set it whichever way you want it is radically different somebody might get it it might be in eco mode and they'll say oh this thing's a dog or they put it in sport mode they're like hey yeah this thing's a lot of fun you can do whatever you want but you want to try them out before you buy the car and as for this man i think he's really smart because he didn't buy the car he's leasing it <laughs> if you want to try a car like this leasing a car is not a bad option a lot of times you're going to get a much better price for example a car i'd never advise anybody to buy a model 3 tesla their bottom end one they got deals now that you can lease them for 275 bucks a month. So if you gotta get a Tesla, hey, why not lease it at that low price? And then you'll probably say, oh boy, Scotty gave me great advice. Oh, I'll never buy one, but hey, I leased it and see how it worked out, right? Well, this is a lot better than that as far as I'm concerned for the money, for what you get. Just remember, you wanna buy one of these Tiguan's, buy it new or lease it like he did because if you buy one of these that's got 150,000 miles on you'll soon find out the true meaning of money pits so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos 
Remember to ring that bell!